I knew I was living my life angry. <clears throat> um, all the negative things that were causing me angst in past relationships. And I wanted to figure out how to tap into my feminine energy. And that's really all I understood. So I was kind of in this empty vat of nothing, knowing I wanted more, knowing I wanted to be softer and knowing I didn't want to take the lead in relationships because that's all I've ever done. As a matter of fact, before I understood the polarity, I did a TikTok where I was like, all I ever do is chase. I'm the chaser. I pursue the relationships, all of that. And I decided I'm not doing that anymore. And people are like, well, sometimes you have to. And I'm like, no, no, I want someone to come to me. I want to know what that feels like. And that was without understanding polarity. And then you and I connected. <clears throat> um, I followed you, you followed me. And then this guy came into my life and I'll let him explain how, but we live an hour apart and I'll let him dive into that. And he was also on TikTok watching my videos and became intrigued with the process. Yeah, yeah much the same type of story. Um, so I, I was, I, I had just got onto TikTok, mainly watching my daughter because she has some funny stuff. And I, I just had to be flipping through one time and came upon her and she had a Syracuse fleece on. And I'm, and I'm like, oh, she may be near me somewhere. And uh, and, and then just started watching it. And, and I too was... In, in this space where I wanted to change um, the way that I dealt with relationships before. I knew that I never wanted to go back to the way that it was because um, I often say that when I look at past relationships, I find out, you know, the one common denominator was me, right? So, so I, th there's something that I must have been doing. So anyways, so then I started, she would pop up and I would watch you were her. stalking. I, I wasn't, well, <laughs> no, man. I wasn't, I wasn't stalking. Man. You're pursuing, <laughs> Ken. You're was pursuing. Yes. Yeah. So, so I just started watching and became intrigued. And then she started talking about this, uh, her journey in the masculine feminine. I'd never heard any of that stuff, uh, quite honestly. And, um, so as she talked about that journey was, was right when I came in and I, I became really interested. And then I may have looked you up a little bit and we have uh, quite a few common friends. So I took the, I took the shot and I, I DM'd her and kind of started a conversation from there. Um, and popping out very often, like she tells me now, it's kind of funny because she's like, I was trying to start a conversation with you and you're like, okay, I got to go bye," it, it, because I didn't want to be seen as the creepy guy, you know? So this, so this took, this was a several month process to actually, for us to, to meet. Um, and then she actually, I believe started talking about with the masculine and feminine part about introduced me to you. And then I started watching your stuff and I'm like, well, this is really interesting and I found out that I was so in my wounded feminine, you know, from past relationships. And I could relate to everything you said, um, that that's kind of how it all started. And uh, yeah, and then it kind of went from there with, with a meeting and stuff like that. And that's where our journey began. It was almost an instant bond, though, I, we, we can say when we met. Um, so it was pretty yeah. cool. Was... Beautiful, beautiful. So Jolene, from your perspective, he comes into your... As the kids say, he dropped into your DMs or slid. No, it's slid. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah, it's slid. He slid into your DMs. So at that point, how was that received? Honestly, from the first time, and this gets a little woo woo y, I knew it wasn't like other creepy, weird spam things, especially because <clears throat> we had friends in common. I'm like, who is this guy? And so he would make comments in my different videos. I just could tell there was something different. And we talk about this all the time, how, you know, I'm on a spiritual journey. He's on a spiritual journey. And there's nothing greater than being with a partner that has the same interests and wants to um, tackle the same traumas and, and, and be the very best version of ourselves. But um, yeah, I didn't, I thought it was weird, but not too weird. And like he said, he would come in and he would start a conversation like I was doing a mud run. I'm very athletic. And he's like, oh, I did that mud run two years ago. And then I'd be like, oh, you know, I'd make a comment. And then he would make a comment and he'd jet. And I'm like, what? <laughs> Talk to me. The result was I ended up making a video on TikTok that was generic where I called him out and said, why are you coming into my DMs? If you're a man, why are you coming in? You're not doing it to be friends. What are you doing? Didn't expect that one to go as hype as it did, but a lot of people could clearly relate. 
And he messaged me back and he said, all right, let's do this. Go to dinner. Let's go to dinner. Are you free? What day are you free? I told him the day I was free. And I said, I leave the rest up to you. Mm -hmm. And he, from this moment forward, from that moment to now, he understood. And again, he said he started following you. We talk all the time. We had a conversation just last night where we dove mm -hmm. into our um, former marriages and talked about some of that wounding and how it's not serving us. And we'll be in this room right here and I may do something or he may do something where we pause each other to say, looks like that's creeping up. And then we're trying to figure out how to flip the script on it. So it's very deliberate yeah. um, with us trying to, to work on that. Yeah. So I want to dive into that if you guys are open to share about past relationships and how it's vastly different than what you're experiencing now. How, as you alluded, or you actually said it, you didn't allude to it, Ken, you said, I was in my wounded feminine energy. And Jolene indicated she was in her wounded masculine energy in prior relationships and how that and how that showed up. So I want to, I want to, I want you to dive in and kind of give us a snapshot of where you were before and who was Jolene before and who was Ken before. Let's go there. Yeah. So I, I, like I said, I didn't know any of these terms. I didn't know anything about it, but knowing now that it was just so clearly my wounded feminine, because every, you know, everything that you talk about, um, all, all of the signs that were there, you know, being a martyr and, and oversharing and uh, low self-esteem and just, just all those things and not following through and being that people pleaser. That's a huge, that was a huge one for me. Um, and just wanting to do that. Um, and, and in previous relationships, I was just in that space and in, you know, the, the, the person, the, the person or people that, you know, that I was with, um, nothing against them because I was probably, uh, they were reacting to the way that I was acting. And for whatever reason, for whatever trauma may have happened way back when that I was trying to work through or didn't even know that it was there in all honesty, I didn't know that's what it was. So they were reacting to that. And then it was shut down. And, you know, you get to that point, we tried, you know, tried all the usual things. It just didn't work. Um, so I knew that I did not want to go back to that place. Uh, and, and that's pretty much where I was. And so in the alone time after, you know, separation and living alone, I did a whole lot of introspection and looking and trying to learn, trying to get into, you, you know, all the, the law of attraction and all, and all this kind of energy, you know, and, and, and really tapping into all that, um, which I firmly, firmly believe, you know, I, I, I'm a kind of a science kind of guy to begin with. I love quantum physics and all that stuff. So I buy into it. I believe it. I've seen the results of it. Um, so that's where I was. Um, and, and like she said, when the first time we got together, when she said, I leave the rest up to you, um, just to step back a little bit up to that point, uh, I talk about how she had based, I'd been watching. She basically gave a roadmap to her heart, right? So I knew as soon as she said, I leave the rest up to, I'll leave the rest up to you. I mean, so far out of my comfort zone, I panicked and I'm like, I'm doing the work. I am going to, I'm doing research. I'm planning this thing out. It was like two days. I, I'm planning this thing out. I'm calling friends who are from the area. Where can we go? What can we do? What's a good place? And took it from there and tried to, and mapped out every, it's funny now we talk about it. I mapped out every little bit of that date that we went on right up to the goodbye. I didn't, we didn't know how to say good, the most, oh, awkward, I knew. the most awkward moment I, right up to that. I was so good. Um, but no, it was so that that's where I was in, in a previous relationship. And again, it was just where I was and I needed to get out of that watching you and following you and then watching her talk about it. I was like, that's what I want to do. You, you know, that's where I want to be. And boy, the first time we did it, we, we, we met and it was like, when I had my masculine on, she was in her feminine and I was, she had a little twinkle in her eye and I was like, I just want so much more of this, you know? Mm -hmm. And that's kind of where, that's kind of where it took off. Fantastic. I want to pause here before we jump, jump uh, into Jolene's story. I want everyone who's watching this live to acknowledge, not let it slip by. Ken did his work, his homework. When she said, I'm going to leave the rest up to you. That is a man in his masculine doing his work to earn his PhD in the woman he just met. He used his resources. <laughs> I love that, Ken. We, uh, I got to call some people around that they've got to know. So yeah. Leveraging resources because what happened was Jolene challenged Ken by saying, I leave the rest up to you. 
That wasn't a directive. It was in passive tone, which is all feminine. What Ken didn't do was shrink. What Ken didn't do was like, oh, well, what do you want to do? Which is the last thing <laughs> that women want to hear, right, Jolene? Last thing you want to hear. I don't know. What do you want to do, honey? What do you want to do? Right? That's passive, right? And that's wounded feminine energy. So I want to. I want to celebrate. Uh oh, did we freeze? We're uh -oh. here. You guys are frozen. We are. Uh, you just froze, also. Oh, oh. you're frozen here, but <clears throat> it'll un <clears throat> it'll undo. That yeah, I wish you could see the screenshot of you frozen, though. It's funny. I don't hear you now. <clears throat> We're still here. I need to screenshot that. We're still here, David, if you can hear us. <clears throat> Sorry. I wonder if I'm in the group and I can see. Oh, maybe. Yeah. Did you find it too? Uh, no, I didn't look. Welcome. There. Aww. Nope, there he is. He's coming back. There we are. Look. We're back. Are we back? Are we back? And we're back. We're back. We're back. <laughs> oh, my gosh. And we're back. <laughs> we're back. You've said that a few times, haven't you, Joe? <laughs> yeah. All right. I think we're good. I think we're back. Let's see if... Yeah, we're still here. Yeah, I've got people here live who say, we'll still, we'll, we're still here. <laughs> I don't know what happened on my side. Something happened. We have some weird weather coming through. Maybe that's the deal. So I was celebrating Ken's initiative, which is the masculine energy coming forward. When Jolene said, I'll leave the rest up to you on their very first date. And he took the initiative. He planned. He plotted. Save the end of the day. We'll get there in a moment. But hey, pretty good. Really good, really great. So I'm gonna pause there and pass the ball over to Jolene and highlight some of where you came from, past relationships, Jolene, and then bring us up to date on that first date as Ken did. Okay, so without knowing in past relationships, I was in my wounded masculine, I clearly was. I was controlling, I was manipulative, I was angry, I did everything, I took the lead. Um, I forced outcomes. I expected my partner to follow through with things and they never did. And it was because I was hanging on to all this wounded masculine, which pushed them and their wounded feminine. And when I took inventory, even on, so I was married for 11 years, even the few relationships before then, it was the same thing. So I thought that just made me strong because I want, I had so many dreams and desires and I'm a huge risk taker. And the past boyfriends, even from high school would be like, don't mess with her. And so I took that as, yeah, don't, you know, that I'm somebody, if you say, don't mess with me, you know, that makes me important or significant. Um, but especially in my marriage, it was the greatest challenge. And I became resentful and angry. Like I've never experienced rage before. And I've been pretty transparent about that in some of the videos that I've put up. And I just thought that's how it was. You know, people would say, tolerate it, it'll get better, whatever. But uh, every day he would shrink and every day I would roar and he would come through the door walking on eggshells. And, and he thought, and we've talked about this much, what you thought in your relationship that I wanted to make the decisions. I didn't. And I even remember saying to him, I don't want to be in control. And he said, I think you do. I remember that very clearly. And I said, I don't, I don't, I want you to make decisions. I want you to take the lead. And I didn't even know what I was talking about. I just wanted him to take the lead, which tells me now that is my true essence within is feminine. Cause I would have arm wrestled you for a little while saying it was masculine because I'm um, very masculine in, in the way I move or the way I talk and the way I project and in my job and things like that. And I'm learning mm -hmm. there's spaces to put that and spaces mm -hmm. to rest into it. Mm -hmm. So when we met, he knew this and it's been about four months that we have had this incredible adventure and we're there to help each other. And that's the fun part is, um, we know what we want, 
We know what we're after and we're doing the work. We're reading and we're talking. Like we wake up at five o'clock in the morning just to talk for like an hour and a half. And if there's an issue, it's not presented on either side as anger. It's presented softly and we talk about it. If there's ever a time where, cause I'm still working through how to do this. If there's ever a time where I can't voice a concern, I will tell him, and this hasn't happened in a while, mm -hmm. but especially in the beginning, I need to step away because I wanted to manage the, the anger and the frustration and not project it on him having no clue what was actually unfolding. So we still have, I mean, we're so, we, we're so young into this, but we're so eager to learn more and to make it work because what, if there's anything I want people listening to understand is it's such a gift. Like that's the thing we say to each other all the time. It's such a gift to know that someone's listening to you mm. and honoring you and guiding you through it. And if we mess up or make a mistake, there's no anger about it. Mm -hmm. It's helping us self-correct. And he even said last night, I got to work more on this. I'm like, you're doing great. Like call me out too. The, the number of times I'm in my masculine and I, I recognize it immediately. And I just want to, you know, we still have a lot to learn. Yeah. Yeah. And I appreciate your vulnerability and transparency. There is, we receive so many questions about that very thing. So David, how long do I have to wait to heal, to have a truly polarized relationship? I said, here we go. <laughs> like uh, the next 50 years, next 70 years, because this is an ongoing, consistent healing journey. And you've recognized that. And that's really beautiful. And I love the fact that you said we are a work in progress. We are we are on this journey and we're continuing to learn. So let's dig in a little bit about what you're learning about yourselves within this relationship. What do you continue to learn, Ken, about you and your masculine and how the feminine may creep in, the wounded feminine, not the healing feminine, but your wounded feminine still may creep in. If you're open to share, perhaps a scenario, perhaps a conflict, perhaps something that's real that has happened in recent or closer to the beginning of your relationship, I want to dig in. I want to provide some more evidence of, of what this looks like because it's not clean. It is messy and it's a gift as Jolene indicated. Yeah. Um, there, we, we, we do have times in, in, and like Jolene said, it, it, we're, we're new into it, but we've come to a point where I think we help each other so much and we're, we're trying, we're really diving into it and trying to learn so much about it that the, the, the personal taking things personally, I think has been taken out of it. Right. So in the very beginning, when she would, you know, she would go into her masculine and, and whatever. And, and like she said, she would have to retreat for a little while to, to gather her thoughts, to get away. I would have to give her space and give her grace. That was, that was never me. I was always, we're going to fix this now. we got to talk about this. What's going on, Bob, you know, and that would just set, you know, if I did that, that would just set her off. So, but you're right about getting your PhD right in, in, in her. It is what I want. And, and that's what I'm working towards. So I know and we've talked about that. I know that it's not directed at me. It's it's her, and she, she did a great video about the dragons, right? Those dragons that are in there that I don't see. Um, so it's not about me. And in the beginning, this happened a, a few times, so more than it does now, for sure. Um, and I would always think, well, that was a great run, you know. It's and maybe there's something after this, you know. And, and that's it. It's it's done. Well, I'm to the point now, and, and, and we, we talk about this, and, and she is too, where we understand we're not there. We're, we're in this for, for the long haul. Yeah. And if we come into a situation, we, we had, we had the, the one a couple weeks ago, right, right before Christmas, right? That's a pretty good example. Yeah. When we were in, uh, <clears throat> coming, right. ba coming back, uh, when I was sick and we were coming back in the car, and, and you, something, something happened that I didn't even know what it was. Oh, from Clayton. Yeah. From, okay. Yeah. From Clayton. Yeah. Yeah. And, and we, we were in great, great conversation. We were having a good time. We went up, we got some gifts. We, get, we did some stuff and on the way back. And then she just kind of clammed up and, and, and I'm like, geez, what did I do? And we were driving back and I knew something was up. The old me would have said, what's going on? You know, how, how's everything going? We need to talk about this. We need to, uh, that. and she was looking out the window. Um, and I didn't know what was going on. 
but, but I know enough about our relationship at this point that she needed time to process whatever. And she will tell me what it is when she's ready. So what, what I, you know, while we were driving, it was quiet. It was a quiet ride, right? Well, I reached over and I, and I just grabbed her hand and she didn't pull away, which told me, yep, there's, but she kept looking at the window. There's something going on, but she didn't pull away and she's holding my hand. So I held hers. I, I asked her where to turn or something. And she was gentle. She was kind, you know, and then when we came back, you were going to, I was sick at the time. So I was going to come in and I was going to stay here. You had to run another errand and we pulled up and she was going to get in her car and she started to get out and I stopped her and, and just kind of, you know, took her by the chin and gave her a kiss. And but what you said, yeah. And, and we made an agreement that not just that then, but we always said, we don't leave without a kiss. You know, we don't, we don't say goodbye without a kiss. So even though I knew something was up, even though there was something and and we did, and that just softened the whole, the whole thing. So, so I guess, and then she went, she ran around. I came in here. She came back about an hour, hour and a half later. She walked in. The first thing she did was gave me a hug, didn't say a word. And then we talked and, and, and we were, after we talked, it was every time we talked, and every time we talk about these things where she might all of a sudden, you know, snap into her masculine, which then throws me back into my wounded. And then I'm, I'm sorry. You know, I'll start with the, I'm sorry. And I start with this and it's like, stop, stop. What are you doing? Um, it, that I just, just lost my train of thought, but, but she, she, she was so gentle in the way that we went about it. And when we had these conversations, we're, we're always so much better at right after the conversation, we are 10 times better than we were five minutes ago. And it just, we, it just builds. I, I, it's out there. It, people, you have to do the work though. You have to do the work and, and realize that it may not be about you. It may be a, a, a past, something in the past. And it happens to me too with her. And we just have to learn to recognize that, take a step back, give that little bit of space and then move on. Yeah. And, uh, and yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty phenomenal when, when you get the, when you get the flipping of the polarization and you get where you need to be, it's so good. It's pretty it, it, it is just, yeah, it's just so good. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I always know Jolene's ready to rev up. She's ready to tell her story it's hot, it's hot. as she strokes the cat. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'm glad we're recording this. All right, Jolene. Jump in here, jump in here. What some of the, you could leverage some of the stories that Ken was saying, kind of what the struggles and kind of how you're navigating that and recognizing woundedness when it's coming forward. I'll let you talk. Two things, just to leverage Please. your story. Um, when he took my face and kissed me, mm -hmm. that was everything. When he took my face and said, we never leave without kissing each other goodbye. That was hot. That was him and his masculine. And no matter what, and I, it was great. So I am so glad he did that because you and your past wouldn't have, and no. me in my past would have been like expletive, expletive. <laughs> Get the hell away from me. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. But you didn't know this. I didn't tell you this. So um, this will be fun for you to hear completely wrong. <laughs> Live. There we go. Yeah, <laughs> I love it. So we Let's were sitting it. here, and this is Ken's GoPro, and we were working on hooking up my Yeti to his GoPro to start a project. But yep. anyway, um, and we were trying to figure out the, the import, like what ports were what ports, right? The old version of me would have lost my patience, would have gotten angry, would have been frustrated, impatient and irritated. And none of that occurred. It was a yeah. true, partnership it was actually kind of fun to figure it out we're looking this up we're googling that we're looking on the phone we laugh at each other's stupidity and that never would have happened in my past i would have been impatient and irritated that it didn't move quicker and it was so it was a partnership and the fact that i sat there literally just a soft voice very very calm was a practice for me that didn't last as a practice very long because then it became extremely natural. And I thought, how did I not do this all my life? Mm -hmm. What is there to get angry or worked up about when 
<clears throat> I can't imagine getting angry at him because he is such a giver and so kind and really is doing the work and is so much fun. Like the shit we laugh at. <laughs> what were we laughing at even before we came on? Oh no, we better not say. <laughs> I guess we better not say. <laughs> That's all right. Sorry, right. Must have been good. Sorry, another... Sorry. <laughs> yeah. that's, that's for after midnight, I think. I don't know. After midnight. Yeah. <laughs> I like it. I like it. But that that made it so I didn't tell you that. I was gonna talk to you about it. Is it's always I have a choice in every moment. And I never want to be ever again that angry person who has to control everything, that has to drop things in front of someone to remind them. It's even with the Christmas boxes, like your mother was saying, mm -hmm. we, we took his parents' Christmas tree down and Ken has this, there's this big tub and he's got to put the bulbs, in. it's like a puzzle. I sat there and allowed it and she was like, turn it this way, turn it that way, he goes. <laughs> I, said, well, I, said, I said, well, there's someone in her mask. He caught, he's like, there's someone in their mask. Like, because it shows up everywhere now. We see right. it everywhere with everybody. So. Right. Yeah. And if you, what you didn't know last night about when we, when you were doing that, we were looking up the, the ports and stuff is I noticed that how, how, how calm you were and you, you, you were, you were just, and I appreciated that. And yeah, I, it, it was clearly evident that we, we just looked it up and you're right. You could have got the, the old, you would have, I'm me. sure would have done that. Yeah. He yeah. doesn't know the old me, Yeah, but yeah. And that I just, for anyone hearing that was a very conscious choice on my part. So in every moment with every scenario, it's a conscious choice. And the way I look at it is I want to get curious about a different result. And so I'm always curious about these different results. And even at work today, I had to go to work and there was a meeting and I had to take deep breaths and I stayed in my feminine where normally I'm very reactive and defensive at um, someone trying to make a suggestion without asking me about my expertise, for God's sakes, you know? So it's, it's a conscious choice in every moment and it's getting easier. That doesn't mean I don't fall back mm -hmm. or make mistakes. I do. And so does Ken. Yeah. And, and, it, and it is awkward in the beginning when you're, when you're, because you have to consciously think about getting in your, getting out of your feminine and getting in your masculine. Um, one real quick example, and, and then we can move on. But, but there was, um, she was sick. Uh, what, <clears throat> um, I don't know, maybe a month ago or something. And it was, it was 11, it was after 11 o'clock at night. And I'm, and I was like, I'm, you know, I was going to go out and get, get some medicine right? Because she needed, she needed some stuff. And I think I said something to the effect of maybe I'll go out and get you something, get, you know, I'm going to run to the store and grab some medicine. And I don't know if you said, you know, that's okay. Or do you really want to do that or whatever? And then I, I got out of bed and I walked over to the side and I said, I'm going to the store to get you some medicine. And, and then I just, I went. So I, so it, it's, it's a process. It's, it's, yeah, it, it's such a work. You gotta, I should have left out the beginning and just gone to the second part, you know, but that's what right. I'm working Right? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. That's the work in progress. I want yeah. to highlight that moment there. And those of you that are watching this live and maybe perhaps we'll, we'll catch the recording. What Ken did there was set, was told Jolene, I'm going to go get you medicine. What that does is it allows her to know she can surrender. She can soften because someone has her. And it can feel scary. I know it was for me when I first began to do that. Yeah, Ken, Ken is looking at me the same way. Like, wait, you can tell your woman what you're doing? Yes, you can. That's what she wants. It's not control. It's leadership, friends. And Jolene, to help her, what, what Ken did there was provided a loving container for her to feel cared for. Because if he says, hey, babe, what do you think? Should I? I mean, you can even see my countenance there. She might show exactly, exactly. Do you want me to? Are you sure? Right. That's passive. It's indecisive and it's wounded feminine friends. Okay. Make a decision and stick with it. I want to highlight too, where Ken said so much of this is not taking it personal. So if Ken made the quote wrong decision or Jolene didn't want that, it's okay. It has nothing to do with Ken. He can simply pivot and make another decision based on what she truly wants.
but he's got to make the decisive decision. I love that. And it also helps Jolene, who may be in her wounded masculine, by him saying, I've got this, as opposed to her saying, no, no, I need to get up. And, oh, maybe I need to, oh, I don't want him to get up. And that's too much trouble. Right. I don't want that. Will that? And I don't know if this is true for you guys. But occasionally, often, women will take back the masculine and say, oh, don't go do that because it has bitten them in the past. Because they've allowed a man to perhaps do something and then it's held over their head. So you have that dynamic too, to where, well, I would really want him to do this, but then it's really conditional. And you can just tell by that interaction that this is Ken wholeheartedly with his masculine wanting to give to Jolene, to care for her, to take care of her. It's beautiful, powerful. Yeah. Jolene. <laughs> Yeah, she keeps saying to the it's hot. I was gonna hot. Yeah, I gotta write it on a piece of paper so I can hold it up every time. There you go. I like that. There <laughs> you go. We have visuals. Yeah. Exactly. <clears throat> exactly. I want to read a comment. Somebody uh, we got some folks here live. Um Casey says, interesting to hear a clear description of a woman that has a demanding job and a strong personality say that her true essence is feminine. It's possible to be in your feminine and still be a strong woman. I think there is a common misunderstanding on that. Yeah, absolutely. There you go. So I don't even remember where we were. We don't know where I'm we sure are. Where the, well, yeah, we, we don't know. We don't know where we are either. Um, I wanted to, there was something that you said at one point, Jolene, not on this particular call, but you said. Ken's masculine puts me in my feminine. Mm -hmm. Is that how you said that? Yeah. So. Yeah, say a little bit. I, I know this has been common here on this call. But for I know a lot of folks who are watching live or will watch later, that can be a triggering statement. His masculine puts me in my feminine. So how is that for you to feel safe, to feel secure and not controlling? What does that feel like to you? God, like I lost 20 pounds. Mm. I trust him. Ah. Mm. I just said this to him the other night. I love watching him drive. I know this sounds corny, <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's hot because he he'll turn the steering with one finger and he'll back up into the, and I say that to me, he's like, what is it? What he's in such control. <laughs> so we were driving. Was it last night? Was it last night? home from your parents two nights ago saturday oh, was yeah. that two nights ago? it was a snowstorm yeah it was yeah a snowstorm and if i think for the first time in my life i just sat back and he i didn't need to be like watch out oh my god there's a car <laughs> like none of that happened and he's been in the car with me where i flinch like that even when there's no snow and i just was so relaxed and i realized it wasn't about that moment in the driving it was about the arc of our entire relationship so far is that he shows up, he does what he says, he does it a thousand percent. And I just trust him. He doesn't waver. He's, I even said to him when, when we first started dating, you never struck me as insecure. You seemed so confident. And he was like, really? Cause I was scared out of my mind, <laughs> but the, it's, the, he has my trust now. So it's easier for me when he isn't as masculine for me to soften back mm -hmm. than maybe in the first few months of it because I trust him. I don't even know how else to explain it. I just trust that he's going to handle the outcome. And I sit here watching him do it. And it's not even a hesitation. And it's, it's really great. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's hot. <laughs> well done, Jolene. Well done that it can sound pithy, it can sound simple to hear, well, I simply trust him. And that is in a response to not feeling trust in prior relationships, fair to say, Jolene? Yes. Oh, yeah. 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 So it's imperative for the feminine to be in her feminine when she can count on the masculine to do what he says he's going to do 
What'd you say? That's it. Yeah. To be reliable, to be consistent, to prior prioritize her. That grounding effect, that's why we leverage this phrase in our work, is holding space. So Ken provides the container. We masculine men provide the container for the feminine to flourish, to grow and enliven and soften and surrender and be sensual and sexy and glowing and provide the life that we so, I do, Ken does, every masculine man wants. Because without that feminine, we're just dry. We're logical. We're boring, right? Sit around and talk about, I don't know what we talk about. So it, that is the polarity that's happening here. And I'm, I recognize, and, and those of you that are watching this and have been watching this live, if you've recognized Jolene's presence and her essence has shifted just in the time of this call, she is more, see her, see how she's sitting right now? See how Ken is sitting? It's beautiful. And she has reserved, she has surrendered, she has leaned back more. When she's talking about her and her wounded feminine, when she has been in the, in the past, she's coming forward and she's, ah, watch out, snowstorm, cattle in the road, whatever the case may be. And now she is in that softened, surrendering energy, which is feminine. And when she's in that space, Ken, how do you feel when she is able to, when you know that she trusts you? When you know that she is surrendering, when you know that she is softened, when you know that she is calm, what does that do for you? Well, um, by the same token, it, it makes it easier for me to be in my masculine, quite honestly, um, because she is in her feminine and she is trusting in, in all that. And, and that is that is the, the, the essence. That's the entire goal. I tell her this all the time that's the goal of what i'm going for it's like that's that's why i exist now is to is to make her feel safe to make her feel you know feminine to make her feel sensual to make her feel all that stuff and it, it just makes it easier for me when she when she's in that space and it makes me feel good that i don't i don't need the acknowledgement of it or, or anything like that it's just that's what i want that i just feel good doing i i said something to the other day uh, I, um it might've been yesterday. I did something. Oh, I think I went to, I went to the store and you were, when you were back here and I said, it makes me feel good to be able to go and do that for you, it, you know, and do it for us um, really. But, and, and, and that's, I don't need to thank you. I don't need any of that stuff. And that's really all it is. It's just, and then being able to just look at her. And I mean, she's so soft and she's so, it went when she's in that space and uh, beautiful. I, I, it's just, there's no other way to describe it. I, I, I yeah. it's just, you can it's, see it. You can see yeah. it. You can feel it. Those of you that are watching you can, can see it and feel it. it. Yeah. Yeah. I want to highlight something that you just said there, Ken, um, that gets a lot of interest. Let's just say that on TikTok and all the social. When I, when I talk about how men don't need praise for what they're doing and how they're giving and all that. I love how you said that. I don't need the thank you. I don't need the recognition. I don't need the award. I don't need the, oh my God, you're the most of me. It is enough to know that she is provided for. She is protected. She is safe. She is secure. That is enough for you. It's enough for me to know that Paige is cared for. It's astronomical. And when you are in that space and you can see it on Ken's face too, you can see it on mine because I'm considering here Paige in my mind too, is we love it when we have the space in order to give to our woman. And I have yet, I don't know about you, Ken, but I'd love to hear your response to this. I have yet to run out of giving energy. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, we were talking about it earlier. I, I, I watched your, your video from today, as you know. Yep, yep. Uh, I felt the same way. When you said you have so much to get, I'm the same way. I feel the same way. I just want to give, give, give it. And, and, and there's no shortage of, of giving. So, yeah, absolutely. 100%. I related to what you were saying in there. <laughs> yeah. Julie, I want to, I want to attach to that for a second. Talk to me a little bit about how that is received through your journey of wounding to hear a man say, I never have too much to give. What, what initially when you hear that, is there skepticism? Is there, well, let's just see. Talk to me a little bit about that. 
there's not skepticism, but he literally said that last night. <laughs> literally said, there's so much I want to give you and do for us and build for us and do for you. And do I fear it? No. When I say I'm all in, I am a thousand percent and this is it. I don't care about anything else. I don't care about pointless conversations or tasks that I need to do that aren't going to get me anywhere. All I care about is, is building a life with someone. I've never had this ever. So nothing else matters. In the beginning, maybe a little skeptical because I didn't understand it. And in past experiences, we did talk about it. We talked about, um, this was at a five o'clock in the morning conversation, how we, in a lot of new relationships, the man will give and give and give, and then it stops. Right. And yeah. I remember telling like a boyfriend in high school, it's like you're handing candy to a baby and then you stop giving baby candy. And why? And it's just because they end up in this complacent comfort. We, he got the capture and that's it. Right. I don't ever think, or that's just not possible with him. And I know people, some people don't understand that. And they're like, you just wait for the other shoe to drop. I right. could live in that energy and do right. that, but that's all I've ever done. And I got the results that I got. Right. And now yeah. the choice is, is quite conscious just to move forward and um, build a life like none, none other that I have ever had with anybody. I don't know how long I have with him. This is, I'm 50, how old am I? 51. He's, you're going to, you're going to be 60 in January. <laughs> like, why not just yeah. like go all out and enjoy this? Why do I have to be so calculated and worry about things that are pointless? We've had the children, we've done the marriages, we've walked the walk, we've done all of those things. There's no skepticism anymore. There's no fear. And you know what? If he wakes up tomorrow and he's like, mm, you know, this isn't going to work out. Okay. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Right. I was going to say, <laughs> I, I don't care about other people saying, I told you so this experience alone has been so healing and so incredible. I yeah. know there's no um, guarantees in life. Mm -hmm. I just want to live one day at a time. Yeah. I'm so glad that you said that. Oh, go ahead, Ken, please. I was just going to say, and, and there, there is a time, sometimes she would get, um, in a space uh, for whatever reason, um, where, what if, what if, what if, oh, yeah, right. Yeah. You, you know, what if you wake up tomorrow and you don't feel that way about me? What yeah. if this happens or what if that happens? And this was actually, I have a big crush on you. This, <laughs> this was actually the other night and, and she, what, she was like, what if, what if this, what if that, what if this, what if that? And, and I told her, I said, I don't want to live in the, what if I want to live in the, what is, you know, and right now, what is, this is just the most magical thing that is just, I, I cannot even no, explain. I can't either. Um, I try like hell. Yeah. It's, it's, <laughs> you don't yeah. have to. None of your business. Yeah. Yeah. None of your business. Yeah, none of your business. I want to highlight, Julian, what you said earlier. You said, if Ken wakes up tomorrow morning and for whatever reason says, you know what? I'm good. I'm done. I'm moving on. You're indicating okay, there'll probably be a lot of questioning, <laughs> there'll probably be some sadness, but at through it all, no one is going to take this experience from you. No one's going to take the healing thus far. I feel the very same way, and it's it can be very confusing to people. If Paige gets up tomorrow morning and she chooses to go a different way, again, I will have questions. At the same time, I'm good because I've been doing this work you've been doing this work independently and we highlight this a lot in our in our work in page and i's work is we work with couples like ken and jolene but we work with them independently it's so important to know that this is an independent individual journey you do not save fix or harness a marriage what you do is you work on yourself and you can see the evidence of that certainly in this couple um because i know i know you guys have have taken hold of a lot of what we're teaching. I know you're getting that a lot in different places. You've taken one of our courses, which is amazing. Um, 
even had the notebook. I even told Paige, I said, I don't know if she watched or not or couldn't watch the other one. She held up the notebook like, yes, we are learning. You are, you, And that is so critical for those of you that are watching or listening to remain curious before critical, mm-hmm. to always be a learner and not a knower. And uh, these are two individuals who have seen a lot of life. And they have learned a tremendous amount and they're curious enough to know, you know what? We got a whole lot to learn still. So do I, so do we all. So if you remain in that curious mindset and allow that the past is important to know and it doesn't define us clearly. So those of you that are watching said, could this be me? And you may be in a marriage of 20 years or 30 years thinking, well, this is just the way it's going to be, but it can change. That relationship can change. And you can build a new relationship, obviously, with with what we've seen here with Ken and Jolene. So we're going to wrap this up because uh, it's about dinner time for me. I don't know if you all have eaten, but hey, let's get let's get real about this. Um, let's bring this conversation to a close or as we say, pause it because great conversations never come to an end. You just put a pause on it. Right. So as, as we exit here, Ken and Jolene, what uh, highlight some things for some folks to say? What would you tell, what do you tell? I know Jolene says this every single day on it. And by the way, if you're not following Ken and Jolene on TikTok, go and follow them <laughs> on the Instagram, all the things you will. Jolene is one of my favorite follows. She's, well, you can just tell she's right here. Okay. And uh, Ken is pretty special too. Well, let's not leave him out. He wants to be TikTok famous too. I don't know. Um, but uh, kind of send the folks out with, hey, this is what you can do. This is per- perhaps a perhaps a step, a simple step that you could give to the folks, a, a piece of a piece of counsel, a piece of wisdom um, for folks who are going, yeah, right. Sure. Not for me. Not going to happen. Go ahead. Yeah, I think um, you know, one of the biggest takeaways is um, it's, it's a constant like you alluded to earlier. It's a constant work. It, it, it's a constant work in progress. You, you never really reach the finish line. Um, but it just keeps getting better and better and better. And, and, and communication is so key. You have to be, you have to communicate. And we do, we literally do get up every morning at five o'clock, have our coffee and talk in bed. Um, and, and that's the biggest thing. And we just, I'm working on my PhD on, you know, on Jolene. And, and that's, that's, that's what I want to do. And it's so enlightening. And just to see the twinkle in her eye and to see her happy. Uh, that's, that's all I need. That's all the affirmation I need is, is to get that to see that. And it just makes me want to keep working and it's available to everybody. It truly, truly is. So beautiful. It, yeah. It's, it's great. Nice. <laughs> is that, uh, where's your post-it note? <laughs> it's hot. So there you go. It's hot. It's hot. All right, Jolene, send us out here. Um, you have to be honest with yourself. You have to recognize that you're part of any of the problem or part of the equation. If you want something different, you have to do something different to get a different result. It's not easy, but that doesn't mean you don't explore it. You have to get curious. If you're curious, that's all it takes. That's all it takes. But I promise you, your your feminine is in there and it's so much fun to explore. It really is. And it feels so good. I have never in my life, if this were an X-rated version of this particular um, live, never in my life had some of the experiences that I'm having. And it's because I'm willing to surrender and I'm letting someone else take control. And it's, it's amazing. Yeah. So do the work. Beautiful. If you read between the lines, you're <laughs> picking up what, what Jolene is putting down. You know what I'm saying? So hail to you, Ken. Um, so <laughs> come on now, come on now. Uh, <laughs> That's awesome. So friends, before we jump off here, if you're, if you're, if you're interested, if you're watching for the first time, if you, you may not be, you're watching inside this group. So this is, this is a uh, page and I's group and, and we've invited Ken and Jolene to, to be a part of uh, this conversation. But if you're interested in knowing the things that they're talking about, um, some of the, the tips and the strategies and the tools on how to be truly feminine, if you're a woman and how to truly be masculine, if you're a man and to have that polarized relationship, drop a comment, send me a DM. Make sure you're following them because they're amazing because they, they, you're witnessing this truth going on in a brand new relationship. So if you're interested, send a message and uh, we can point in the right direction uh, because this is about intentional work, friends. It's not, not going to happen. All right. The masculine man 
if you're a feminine woman, is not just going to show up because you're fed up. Okay, it's just not going to happen. Right? We can wish and we can dream and we can do the three. It's just not going to happen. You have to be intentional. And I, I believe you've heard that today, certainly from Ken and Jolene. So thank you too. You're wonderful souls. Love you both. You're amazing. Thanks for taking the time. And uh, let's, let's, I'm going to go eat dinner. <laughs> Enjoy. Thanks, you guys. Take care. Yep. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, guys. Bye-bye.